sectional dependence approach. So there are some key references that I will present to you shortly. There are just this kind of analysis with regards to economic convergence tests, right? Sigma convergence and theory of applications, uh, the econometric theory of un unknown common factors. I have this book, this book, maybe we can, we can see it shortly if we have enough time. But the basic idea is that we can relate the convergence and the cross-sectional dependency given by the common factors which can be observed or unobserved. Yes. So regarding to your question, uh, in this case, we can include specifically the fixed effects. Yes, there are fixed yeah. effects for each, for each uh, individual right here. But also there are uh, time period effects. Yes, that's why it's the two way panel regression. And we have the exogenous variables right here. So this, is another notation for the transformation of the cross-sectional units, yes? What is the basic idea? We are subtracting the cross-sectional average for the dependent variable and also for the independent variable, yes? And the residual. Therefore, we're relying on this transformation right here. So this cross-section is allowing to eliminate the common factor, yes? So one way to deal, to, to, to dimensionate the behavior of this transformation is that you might consider this, this behavior of the infant mortality rates, right? They are just going down. And then when you apply the cross-section average, they are changing their behavior. Yes, they are changing their behavior and they are, they are presenting some concentration regarding to a certain point. Yes, this could, be, this could be one of the possibilities. There are multiple possibilities of how your data will change with the cross-section average in order to handle the common correlation effects. Yes. So there might be an alternative solution to, to deal with the unknown common factors, maybe. Maybe it's not to, not to eliminate it with the cross-section average. Maybe you can account for them somehow. Maybe you can use proxies, yes? But that is the discussion that relates to apparently every kind of research in econometrics, the specification of the model, yes? So in order to handle the, the, the panel data with the cross-sectional dependency, the idea is to always have a balanced panel data, yes? When you have household level data, it's not that it's not that usual then to present or to witness the unobserved the observed factors, the common observed factors. So sometimes they prefer to use regional data, maybe. And remember, as it goes on on the micro level perspective, the lesser the cross-sectional dependency will exist. Yes, the more aggregated the more cross-sectional dependency. All right, so the idea is to work with large panel data bigger than 20, 20 units in the periods of time and 20 individuals. If there's too small on T, we can do anything, all right? Don't go for the, for the cross-sectional analysis. So check the stationarity of your data. Remember that if you're just, if you're just working with with common correlation, then you just have to go for the stationary data. Yes, then if it implies uh, difference your data, accounted for seasonal domain variables, anything to ensure that the residuals would be stationary. Yes. So in the real world, practically almost all data is cross-sectionally dependent. Yes, because in the real world, everything is correlated with everything. Yes. But the problem is that we might not have data of everything, yes? So we need to rely on this kind of approach to deal with the cross-sectional dependency. So the more aggregate data, the more cross-sectional dependency will be, yes? That is the basic rule regarding to the common correlation effect. Now, yes? 
if, if the stationarity condition cannot be satisfied, do you, we cannot use this. Is there any alternative or yes, ways the, to? The, the alternative is go for the dynamic common correlation, yes? Because we're okay. just presenting right now the simple common correlation, yes? There are no, no dynamics. But the alternative is to go for dynamic common correlation, the DCCA model. So uh, I believe there's, there's just this little explanation, uh, include the, the behavior of the common factors, but rather than this, there's no more useful information right here. All right, so let's go to a theta and let's do some work on this dynamic common correlation, all right. So what do you think so far of the topic of common correlation? I want to hear you. It's interesting, it's what we have been looking for seriously anyway. All right, perfect. So, all right, courses against manual defining dynamic CCGA and DCCA. All right, so I will be using right here one of the database that is commonly used in macroeconomic data, which is the Penn World Table. Yes, as you know, um, Penn World Table considers the country, uh, the years, and some macroeconomic variables. Yes, some macroeconomic variables. And I want to filter this data for a specific region. I want it to be for South America, yes? Because it's highly likely if you, cons if you concentrate on a specific region, which is somewhat, uh, let's say, related to each other, maybe by proximity, maybe by importance, uh, it's highly likely to experience the behavior of the cross-sectional dependency, yes? So I'm just sticking up with South America I'm keeping Argentina, Colombia, Chile. Um, Colombia is already right here. Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, and Uruguay. Yes. So I, uh, this is just the, the command to say or. Yes. I believe you're familiar with this command. If there's any doubt with the command, please tell me. There is nothing wrong. I will respond. And I'm saying right here that keep, if the, keep in the database, the current database, if the countries are these ones, all right? So it's already been done. And let's say what countries remain. Countries of analysis, yes, that's good. And now, um, let's say that I don't have an identification variable, yes? We need, we need to set an identification variable, yes? Because the country, the country is, in a string format, yes? So we need the country giving, a, giving some identification for the panel data. But I believe the country code is not identified. Yes, it's a string variable. So what we're doing here is that we're using the command encode. Encode country, which is the variable that contains all the names of the countries and generate a new variable called ID, which is identification. So if I type edit ID, notice that it will contain the name of my countries, but if I click it with the null label, then it will contain just numbers of identification, yes? So this command can allow you to do some identification variable for your individuals, all right? Then we can set the database. Now it's set with the individual identificator variable and the time period variable in a year periodicity. It's a strongly balanced. This is good because common correlation usually works better with the strongly balanced. Actually, I believe every kind of, of econometric approach works better with the strongly balanced data. All right, so moving along, let's say that I want to estimate the relationship between the real uh, gross domestic production of the economy and the capital of the economy, all right? 
So first of all, I'd like to do is some ordinary list to square regression. Yes, the ISIS approach. So from this approach, uh, one of the conclusions that I probably just made is that this is macroeconomic data. And macroeconomic data will have always unit root. Yes. So let's first inspect behavior of the gross domestic production of the developing economies that we're analyzing. All right, all right. That is something interesting here. Brazil has the higher gross domestic production of the continent. And the, the, the interesting thing is that almost every of the individuals grows when the behavior is going for the same time period of time. Yes, across, across 2000 and 2020, it's growing for each of the countries, but the higher magnitude is Brazil. So this could indicate that we're having some common correlation effect. Yes, let's say that Brazil, it's pulling up all of the other economies. If this is a closed continent, let's suppose this is a, cons a closed continent, therefore the economies are trading with each other, yes? So if the, if the gross domestic production of Brazil is increasing, it can be demanding uh, exportation from the other countries, for Argentina, Colombia maybe, and Chile. Maybe Uruguay doesn't have any exportations to Brazil, that's why it's not growing. So the idea right here is that maybe the growth in Brazil, it's pulling up the growth in the other countries in a different manner, yes? So that, this could be a situation where we're experiencing the, <clears throat> the cross-sectional dependency, yes? And maybe I proceed with other kind of, of the variable, the, the capital variable, the capital services. Let's see the behavior of this. And they are, they are pulling up together. Yes, so there might be a possibility that there is no much cross-sectional dependency in this case because there is not an explicit change uh, which is drastic for one specific economy, yes. One might suspect for cross-sectional dependency if we have this case of Brazil, yes, because according to the gravity model, if Brazil is creating more uh, goods and services, for the economy, it might be requiring exportations of the other countries. And if the other countries are increasing their exportations, then they might be producing even more. Yes, their gross domestic production of these individual economies might be motivated by the expansion of the Brazil economy. Yes. So finally, let's do some, some graphs of the metrics regarding these two variables to see what can be a relationship. All right, so there are different, there are different trends because they are associated to each, to each country, yes. Uh, there might be a common point, but it's on the zero point, so it's not telling anything. But there might be also some common point in this lower part, yes. So how, how do you read this? Well, you, you get in the first square and you see the real gross domestic production, and then you see that there may be some sort of, of common situation or similar situation of these economies which are below this level of gross domestic production, yes. So this is quite interesting but it better just tell me the, the, this line, the XT line, the behavior. Yes, this, this is more illustrating. This is more illustrating rather than the graph matrix. But I recommend you to use the graph matrix to this case.